Hello, we're going to be reading chapter 14 of James and the Giant Peach. We're off, someone was shouting. We're off at last. James woke up with a jump and looked around him. The creatures were all out of their hammocks and moving excitedly around the room. Suddenly the floor gave a great heave as though an earthquake were taking place. Here we go, shouted the old green grasshopper, hopping up and down with excitement. Hold on tight. What's happening, cried James, leaping out of his hammock. What's going on? The ladybug, who was obviously a kind and gentle creature, came over and stood beside him. In case you don't know it, she said, we are about to depart forever from the top of this ghastly hill that we've all been living on for so long. We are about to roll away inside this great, big, beautiful peach to a land of, 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 of to, to a land of, of what? asked James. Never you mind, said the ladybug. But nothing could be worse than this desolate hilltop and those two repulsive ants of yours. Here, here, they all shouted. Here, here. And here's the picture of the ladybug. You may not have noticed it, the ladybug went on, but the whole garden, even before it reaches the steep edge of the hill, happens to be on a steep slope. And therefore, the only thing that has been stopping this peach from rolling away right from the beginning is the thick stem attaching it to the tree. Break the stem, and off we go. Watch it, cried Miss Spider as the room gave another violent lurch. Here we go. Not quite, not quite. At this moment, continued the ladybug, our centipede, who has a pair of jaws as sharp as razors, is up there on top of the peach, nibbling away at that stem. In fact, he must be nearly through it, as you can tell from the way we're lurching about. Would you like me to take you under my wing so that you won't fall over when we start rolling? That's very kind of you, said James, but I think I'll be all right. Just then, the centipede stuck his grinning face through a hole in the ceiling and shouted, I've done it! We're off! The journey begins, sh shouted the centipede. And who knows where it will end, muttered the earthworm. If you have anything to do with it, it can only mean trouble. Nonsense, said the ladybug. We are now about to visit the most marvelous places and see the most wonderful things. Isn't that so, centipede? There's no knowing what we'll see, cried the centipede. We may see a creature with 49 heads who lives in the desolate snow, and whenever he catches a cold, which he dreads, he has 49 noses to blow. We may see the venomous pink-spotted scrunch who can chew up a man with one bite. It likes to eat five of them roasted for lunch and 18 for its supper at night. We may see a dragon, and nobody knows that we won't see a unicorn there. We may see a terrible monster with toes growing out of the tufts of its hair. We may see the sweet little bitty bright hen, so playful, so kind and well-bred, and such beautiful eggs, you just boil them, and then they explode and they blow off your head. A new and a nocerous, surely you'll see, and that enormous and normal gnat, whose sting when it stings you goes in at the knee and comes out through the top of your hat. We may even get lost and be frozen by frost. We may die in an earthquake or tremor, or nastier still, we may even be tossed on the horns of a furious dilemma. But who cares? Let us go from this horrible hill. Let us roll. Let us bowl. Let us plunge. Let's go rolling and bowling and spinning until we're away from old Spiker and Sponge. One second later, slowly, insidiously, almost gently, the great peach started to lean forward and steal into motion. The whole room began to tilt over and all the furniture went sliding across the floor and crashed against the far wall. So did James and the ladybug and the old green grasshopper and Miss Spider and the earthworm, who had just come slithering quickly down the wall. And that is the end of chapter 14.